morning, everyone. I'm trying to switch my screens here. How are you today? Good to see you all. I want to ask you this morning, how is your perspective affecting your life? And are you really creating what you truly desire with the way that you're holding your perspective? We are living in amazing times. I'm Carrie Ellis, author of 21st Century Superhuman. We are living in times when light is pouring into the planet and it's literally pushing us to wake up, to take the next step in our own awakening as humanity, as an entire culture on planet Earth. And this is not by accident. This is all in divine order. And this this is the truth of our being. This is what we jumped in at this time in human history to be part of. And for many of us, this shaking loose from the status quo is challenging. You know, we're sh being shaken out of this old place of safety and familiarity and everything was always the way that we thought it was. And we had these purposes that we thought were valid, but maybe they weren't so valid. And we're having to look within and see what is really important to us and what's really important to our our, our shift in this process, our process in this shift. So I made one video this morning and I deleted it because I thought it didn't have sound, but somebody wrote me and said it did have sound. Something it's, I'm just playing, I'm having to play with the technical process here because I'm using a few layers and um, my friend who is technical, who usually helps me has been traveling across country. So I'm here just working on getting this right. So thank you for putting up with my little tests and um, adding and deleting and replacing. So I'm going to redo what I just did a little bit ago. We have, um, there's so much going on and so much news coming out. I hope that you are in my 21st century superhuman quantum lifestyle group and that you're listening. I've posted a whole bunch of things that Sacha Stone has. He's been on kind of a rampage that he's been putting out lately, like almost something every day. And what's incredible about him is he gives us this opportunity to look at how we're shaping our lives. And there's a lot of knowledge behind that from running the ITNJ hearings and seeing what's been going on behind the scenes, but also from a consciousness level, how do we really wake up within this? And for those of us who are present and accounted for, those are really great dialogues because they're giving us kind of input on how to um, how to develop our thinking, how to develop our thinking in new ways to be free beings, free men and women on the soil of planet Earth. And this is an amazing process that we're in. And I wonder if right now you are breathing, smiling, and loving, if you are getting out and walking barefoot each day, if you are doing some breathing or some meditation when you wake up in the morning so that you have a center and a focal point. And if you're asking yourself, what is your real truth? What do you really want to be living? So when we look at our perspective, there's so much going on right now with the, with the news media. And one of my um, friends posted this morning a really cool thought that historically, when people are kidnapped, they literally begin to love their kidnappers. And we've been kind of kidnapped in this cultural story that we're slaves, that we need to run like little rats on wheels every day and go make money to, so that we can live on an earth that is beautiful, that really has enough food for all of us, that really has enough for all of us. The fact that our birth certificates have been traded on the stock exchange, we're literally chattel that that's been ways that this system that's at the top, that's run by a few people, has kept us going in this feeling like we don't have enough, feeling like we're we have to struggle just in order to survive. And we've got really billions of people on the planet without enough food, shelter, just the basics of life. A child dying every 15 seconds of waterborne illness. And is that imbalance there because some people in the world have plenty and some don't have enough? It's not really the only reason. It's because there's some really big imbalances behind the scenes. So how do we correct this? How do I correct this in my life? Well, I begin listening to my heart. I begin doing what I'm directed to do instead of what society tells me I'm supposed to do. I live in a really beautiful place. I've chosen that. I used to think, oh, I have to stay here. I have to be part of 
what's going on. I have to do what I'm supposed to do in the system, what I'm expected to do. And yet I decided at one point not to do that anymore and to take off and to travel and to begin digging for the aspects of myself that are my real self and to begin living according to those. And in that light, I ended up meeting a wonderful um, husband, my husband, who's my partner on the path and who I'm really harmonious with at the soul level because I decided to to be who I really was instead of pretending to be somebody that fit in in different places. So I also posted last night Jordan Sather's latest, which is really good, and he's talking about all this censoring that's going on. The other day, um, still having a little struggle with my technical stuff, I did a live show with Alexander Ross Soul, which is really good, and the volume didn't come out really well, so I posted it to YouTube and then posted it back to Facebook. And when I did, Facebook said, oh, you're breaking our community guidelines, and we won't post this. You'll be the only person who will be able to see it. And I thought, wow. Wow, censoring is even coming here to me because censoring has been happening on a grand scale. People like David Icke and uh, Brian Rose with millions of views on disclosure videos have been getting shut down, have been getting removed from Facebook, getting removed from YouTube. YouTube said the other day, the woman uh, who runs YouTube said um, anything that says anything different um, from what the CDC says or the World Health Organization about COVID-19, even if it's to um, use turmeric or use something to boost your immune system, will be removed. And this is crazy. This is like, you know, here we are in a world, a free world. Uh, we believe it's a free world. And we right now are reinstating this free world. We're reclaiming it. We're standing up and saying, we have a voice. It is all of us here together who matter, who are creating the narrative that we want to live. And it is all of us voicing our truth that helps create a knowledgeable whole. It isn't just the narrative put out by the conventional news media, which is really part of the old corporatocracy control system. So anyway, Jordan Sather was, I, I put this on my 21st century superhuman quantum lifestyle group, which is, um, I hope you're, that you're a member of. Um, it's a really great place where I'm posting a lot of things that are going on and keeping it in the positive because we want to be in positive creation. But he was talking about, and he's laughing, you know, we have to take these things lightly. We need to keep our perspective in the creation process. Keep our perspective. If we see something's going on, somebody messaged me last night and said, oh, they're going to vaccinate all of us. And I was like, well, but not on my timeline. And we need to be clear of what perspective we're holding. Are we going to take in that fear propaganda and are we going to live in fear? Because the old system lives on our fear. Um, so anyway, back to Jordan Sather, who I keep getting off this subject. But he really listed a lot of the, um, the censoring that's going on, really fun perspective on this and reminding us to take this lightly. And he also lists a number of the Q posts, which are really good and confirming that this old stuff, this new world order that's been running things behind the scenes without really the voice of the people is, is being investigated now. And, um, and there's a lot of confirmation coming through. So we need to know this confirmation. We need to know the change is afoot. We need to know energy is pouring into the planet. We need to know who we are. We need to know what our heart tells us. What does our heart tell us? What does our heart tell us we should be doing every day? I've been having amazing experiences where I think things, I say things, they come into being instantly. And I've been really needing, I've, I've been working so hard for a, a long time. I'm kind of like this one woman show doing, wearing a lot of hats because I haven't had a lot of resources. And um, I've really needed some technical help. I've, help. I've built, had a good mechanism, built a new website, ready to put a lot of things out. And yet it still was kind of sticky in the background. And I kept saying, I need an app. I need an app. And guess who showed up at our door in 
a little Mayan village in Mexico, probably one of the best coders in the world. So we're in the middle of creating, really refining my structure behind the scenes. And I'm so excited about that. And we're working on it every day to get this material out. Also, I was really shocked because when I reposted that video with Alexander the other day, Facebook said, you're breaking our community guidelines. And I went and changed a couple of keywords on YouTube. And I came back and I said, I disagree with their choice. And within about five minutes, they put my video back up. So this is really interesting. Here we are in the middle of this great change. Are we going to stand up? Are we going to take off the mask? Are we going to be who we truly are? Are we going to listen to our heart? Are we going to breathe, smile, and love? Are we going to know that we are creators and what Ever narrative we choose to focus our attention and our energy around is what we're going to hold in form. We are the energy that literally creates the world we see around us. And what is around us is our mirror to tell us what data is inside of us. If we're seeing love, joy, happiness, and peace, then we've really gotten to that inside of ourselves. But if we're seeing masks and we're seeing frustration that is a reminder to us that we're still carrying some of that inside of ourselves so it's time to clear ourselves the one thing that i will say that i say every day is we're overqualified for everything that we do in life except for what we really came here to do and when we start doing what we really came here to do we will be challenged to our utmost i can tell you i'm challenged every day i don't know how anybody can be bored not know what to do, sit around and watch TV, or use um, various things to suppress the brain and the spirit. All I know is I am challenged every day to because I'm asking myself to do my utmost. I'm asking myself to step forward, to share in this way, to bring forth these books, to bring forth knowledge, to help others live a viable path on planet Earth. So anyway, I love you all. I hope you have an awesome day. Listen to your heart. Evaluate your perspective and ask, am I living according to my highest vision, my highest possibility, or am I focusing in fear? You know, we have this great fear of death, and death is really not the end. It is, And I think it's under a lot of this fear-mongering that takes place. So we're used to an old program that keeps us going in a certain way, but it's time to be waking up from that program. And these waves coming in of light and energy are literally waking us up. We, this is literally has the potential of being a more powerful leap in human history than when man discovered language. Think what that means. And we really, it is all of us who have the capability of bringing in the new earth. And this, the old shadows will disintegrate. They will fall out of form as we live in love and joy. So increase your perspective, increase the love quotient in your perspective, the joy quotient, the vision of what you're calling into being. Okay. Breathe, smile, and love, and we shall see you soon. Ciao.